She also helped to uh, locate a flat that was being kept for visiting international people uh, near the British Museum. Uh, and did a lot to set up my, uh, my time there. She also, in a correspondence, inquired whether I would be willing to, quote, help with some teaching during my stay. I agreed to do that, although I, I had no idea what that would actually entail. So I went to the Netherlands conference. It was my first opportunity to interact with other personal construct-oriented psychologists. Uh, I talked about this uh, some years ago, about how I sort of thought maybe I would find out that I totally misunderstood the whole the whole process, but it turned out that I uh, got along well with everyone and I finally found my professional home. Uh, after the Congress, I traveled around visiting colleagues in other parts of Europe and came to Britain then in uh, September. So um, one of the things I came to understand during the months that I was working with her was to develop an appreciation for how she went about doing her business. She'd invited me to assist in teaching the basic course in PCP, which at that time was offered at the Royal Free Hospital. Uh, and participate in an advanced course that was sort of the predecessor to the center that Beverly was talking about that she was uh, offering out of her home in, in Warwick way. Um, and I also came to learn what helping with some teaching meant. Um, Faye was, uh, and I became enchanted with Faye's skills in, as Beverly was describing, a doer, somebody who, who, who got things to happen. Uh, she was the senior psychologist in the psychiatry department and thus had responsibility for a wide range of courses. And if I was the one who was in that role, I would, of course, feel that it's my responsibility to teach all of these courses. But Faye construed it differently. Faye construed her job as to ensure that the courses were taught well. So she got various people to take uh, responsibility for various uh, activities. And uh, without clearly understanding quite what was happening, I ended up teaching several courses, giving a variety of lectures, doing course modules. I kind of ended up feeling like uh, Tom Sawyer's friends, you know, where I was busily, you know, whitewashing defensive thinking they were the ones who were getting the good deal out of it. <laughs> uh, I also enjoyed helping her with this basic uh, PCP course that we taught there in the afternoons. It was one afternoon a week at the Royal Free. But what I remember most about it was that my major role uh, revolved around issues having to do with development, with setting up the afternoon tea. Of course, as a visiting American, I had no idea what afternoon, the, the large role that afternoon tea played in, uh, in Britain. So one of the things that uh, uh, became my job was to, on the, my commute in in the morning, to stop at a local ba bakery and pick up the sticky buns that were to be served during the tea. And then we always had arranged that, uh, you know, prior to the course, we would kind of do a little bit of briefing as to what we were going to cover during that time. But that briefing took place while we were assembling all the materials for the tea service. So I'm sure we must have talked a lot about personal construct psychology and what we were going to talk about during that time. But mostly, again, being the foreigner, uh, it was that ritual having to do with the tea service that I most strikingly remember. I also uh, had the opportunity to get some tutelage from Faye in some uh, basic personal construct activities. She taught me how to administer the repertory grid. This was in the very infancy of the computerized uh, analyses, so it was done you know, face to face uh, with, with inquiries. And so she taught me you know, how to go about that process, first doing it for me, and then having me learn how to do it, giving me feedback. Uh, she also taught me Hinkle's laddering technique that Beverly had mentioned, that, uh, and I still remember and still use the specific terminology that she used to uh, help people generate the higher order uh, superordinate constructs. Also had a wonderful opportunity to have a therapy uh, a client experience with her, and fortunately it was a client who, whose problem was stuttering. And as others have said, that was one of the main areas that she did her initial work in. Uh, so she supervised my work with this client. Uh, we used the rep grid and self-characterization in that process. And basically, as was described, working to help him sort of disentangle his perception of himself as a stutter from his uh, core constructs of being a natural, genuine, sincere person. The problem that he had was that he thought it was that one of his core constructs was being perfectly natural. And for him, being perfectly natural was to be a stutter. So trying to disentangle these was a really interesting experience. And it was great to have Faye as my supervisor. They also assisted me in setting up uh, a networking and connections with other personal construct psychologists. Uh, and I visited a number of people around the London area, Laurie Thomas, Phil Boxer, Lilith Salmon, Gilbert Shaw, Brian Gaines, Peter Stringer. Uh, I made arrangements to uh, spend some time with Miller Mayer in Scotland, visited Don Bannister in uh, Yorkshire on the way back, 
went to a number of workshops in London. Also, there was a symposium that Peter Stringer had organized uh, up in the Lake District, and I went to that. And then after that, Faye rode with me. I chauffeured her up to Aberdeen, Scotland, for the British Psychological Society. The main thing I remember about the British Psychological Society meeting is that there was kind of the alternate BPS meeting where Don Bannister held forth. That was really quite interesting. Uh, one of the other things, too, that I remember very clearly was uh, sailing with Faye and Roy and another friend of theirs uh, across the channel to Cherbourg. That was one of the highlights of my, uh, of my time there, too. Well, after I returned to the U.S., we continued to stay in contact. She did a tour of the U.S. I was at the University of Arizona at that time, and she visited there and uh, made some presentations to uh, one of my graduate courses. This was about the time, as Beverly was describing, that she was developing the center, and she was actively recruiting people in North America to be, to, to be members and to subscribe to the uh, newsletter constructs that they had. One of the things that she discovered early on was that it was too expensive to mail all of the North American copies from the UK, so we worked out an arrangement where she, she sent me the copies in bulk, and then I would mail them out to the, uh, to the individuals in North America, which entails setting up a bank account for the center in US dollars, which I maintained for a number of years in various locations as I moved around, a way to pay for the postage and the envelopes and that sort of thing, and also to provide Faye with a, a, a US dollar bank account that she could use when she came to the US. And I continued to have association with her, of course, through the various international conferences, both the uh, ones in North America and several of the ones abroad. Uh, Mary and I uh, enjoyed visiting the Faye and Roy at their, the sail loft, their, their home there in Falmouth, uh, before the Huddersfield Congress. And uh, we actually drove with them on up to Huddersfield, stopping in, uh, in Stratford upon Avon, one evening sort of soaking up the Shakespearean ambience. And uh, we continued to correspond regularly uh, up until her passing, even though the last time I saw her was uh, in Huddersfield as we were taking off to go for a trip to Ireland. So I really enjoyed the opportunity that this uh, presentation gave me to kind of recount and re-experience, take a look at my relationship with Faye. Uh, but I felt that I, I needed to do more than just talk about my experience to sort of do some construing of what I saw as major, uh, major superordinate constructs that would summarize my experiences and perception of her. And it was somewhat difficult to do that. Uh, but I did articulate what I regard as three general topics in my understanding of Faye and her approach to PCP and her work and her life. Uh, these, I mean, these have been already described by the others ahead of me here. One is that her profound commitment to personal construct psychology. Uh, the second was how her effective productivity in a way that uh, that, that seemed so lacking in the kind of stress and strain that I'd seen in other productive people, and also her intellectual curiosity and her openness to new ideas. So uh, I obviously take full responsibility for having um, fabricated these constructs as a way of understanding her, but let me talk a little bit about them. As David had mentioned, and Beverly too, she had this passionate commitment to PCP. She saw it as a tremendously effective tool for addressing psychological issues, problems, questions, and she believed very strongly in the value of Kelly's ideas and the utility of his theoretical system. Uh, and as David pointed out, she devoted her professional life and her personal life to pursuing that. She also, um, as people have suggested too, felt a personal attraction to PCP through the freedom that it offered for her. And I, it was something that I also resonated with in uh, coming across personal construct psychology. It says, you know, we don't have to be stuck with the ways that we thought we had to look at the world. Uh, just a quote from, uh, from my correspondence with her back in about 2003. She said, I, I found in PCP, I could change myself. I didn't have to be what people said I should be. Quite powerful stuff, she said. So it was that personal aspect of how it gave her freedom to be somebody that, uh, other than what other people thought. There are other two other sort of subordinate dimensions to this that I found uh, useful. One is, uh, I would refer to as sort of practical versus philosophical. And in this case, I'm aware that my orientation is very philosophical, as many of you know from the kind of things that I'm interested in. But Faye was very practical. She enjoyed the philosophical and theoretical uh, discussions. She found them stimulating and interesting. But she didn't identify herself at all as a philosopher or a theoretician. As Beverly said, she was a doer. Um, she enjoyed some of my conceptual articles, and uh, we had recurrent philosophical discussions about them, but she didn't ex share an interest in these abstract topics. She uh, thought they were interesting intellectual exercises, but as she said, when she didn't see the advantage 
of this kind of, of conceptual work. But she remained open to uh, interest in it, and uh, she even suggested that perhaps she felt unease with the philosophical ideas I had because they were threatening to her. Now, I'm quite sure that she had a good point in suggesting that my abstract ideas are pretty useless, but the fact that she was open to the idea that perhaps it was a personal threat to her was something that was really impressive to me. Uh, as others have described, she was very uh, engaged in aggressively in the Kellyan sense, exploring the implications of PCP. Later, as, as others have said, she was a staunch advocate of maintaining the integrity and the richness of the theory, uh, and with these concerns about uh, the broader constructivist view perhaps swallowing that up. Uh, she also, I'd like to focus a little bit on what Beverly had mentioned about her sense of being a doer. That um, she, her understanding of the construing process seemed to focus a lot on the direct immediate experience as a basis for constructs. Um, for her, construing was a nonverbal process, a process of action, a process of feeling for anticipating events. And she also had the view that the outcome that people anticipated was not something cognitive, not something that was labeled or verbal. It was an experiential outcome. So it was about taking action in a particular situation. 